Get ready for the morning rush. We start with Kristen Curry. Good morning. Next big weather maker moves in over the next 48 hours. So for today, we'll see increasing cloud cover out west. The majority of the state can expect increasing wind and high fire danger. We finally see some rain and snow within state line starting tomorrow afternoon with high mountain snow and lower elevation rain could even be looking at a few spotty to strong and severe storms out across the eastern side of the state as we get into tomorrow afternoon, late afternoon at that and evening hours. We will be sure to keep you updated as this storm moves in. Catherine. This morning, UNM police are warning those on campus to be on alert after a reported sexual assault on campus here at Johnson Field. School officials sent out a Lobo alert early this morning at around 1230, saying the assault happened to a non-student on the southeast corner of the field. It described the suspect as a Native American man in his late 20s or early 30s, wearing a gray beanie and black shirt with white writing. The alert indicates he was last seen carrying a backpack running northeast from campus behind Coronado Hall to Girard. Crystal? On to news happening today, a man accused of killing a Navajo Nation police officer is expected to appear in federal court again. 23-year-old Kirby Cleveland remains in custody this morning pending a preliminary hearing and a detention hearing scheduled for today. Last week, police say Officer Houston Largo was shot and killed at a traffic stop in Pruitt, New Mexico by Cleveland. On to other news happening today, APD is expected to release more information about the thieves hiding skimmers inside gas pumps and ATMs. They found and removed three skimmers so far, but APD believes there were 19 others still out there. We'll update you on what police have to say. On to new news this morning, as state lawmakers wait for the governor to call a special session to address next year's fiscal budget. The state could be in trouble for this fiscal year. According to the journal, plummeting reserves and low fund levels have top budget officials nervous that the state could be looking at extreme measures. That does include partial closures of state parks and museums. We'll let you know what officials have to say today. And happening today in a show of force, House Democrats plan to join Vice President Joe Biden on the steps of the Capitol, marking the seventh anniversary of the passage of the Affordable Health Care Act. President Trump will also meet with Congressional Black Caucus today in the five facts how the president is pushing the GOP's health care bill. On to new details, dozens of people waking up homeless in a Kansas City suburb after this eight alarm fire ravaged two dozen homes. This morning we're showing you the new video. Firefighters were able to finally get that fire under control, but it left three of them injured. Twenty five homes were destroyed. Officials say the cause of the fire was accidental. A welder conducting hot work on site. The UK now following the United States lead. It's now banning airline passengers from much of the Middle East and North Africa from carrying on large electronic devices. It's all due to concerns of terrorism. The Trump administration handed down the ban just yesterday. The UK ban affects six countries that does include two not on the US list, Tunisia and Lebanon. On to new details, a man convicted in an Albuquerque cold case will serve an additional 18 years in prison. Mark Chavez was sentenced for the 2006 disturbing kidnapping of an Albuquerque woman yesterday. The 18-year sentence will begin after Chavez finishes up his 12-year sentence that he's already serving for the brutal murder of a woman in Moriarty. Family and friends mourning the death of a game show creator, Chuck Barris. He's de he died at the age of 87. He is the madcap producer of The Gong Show and The Dating Game. Died of natural causes yesterday afternoon at his home in New York. Barris is survived by his wife of 16 years. Kristen. Today's Metro threat index up to a seven because of the high fire danger. We have strong southwesterly winds hitting us at about 20 to 30 miles per hour sustained gusts up to 40 miles per hour. And then we're going to be matching that with the low humidity less than 15%. So please hold off on all outdoor burns. Crystal. Beginning this fall, international students can begin attending CNM. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security recently certified the community college to enroll international students studying on M and F visas. The school expects some of the first to take advantage of studying here will be family members of people that have migrated from other countries to Albuquerque. You just have a few more days to enjoy Ski Santa Fe for this season. Skiers and boarders can hit the slopes until Sunday. Then the resort will close. This weekend, all lifts and all facilities will be open and tickets will be sold at discounted prices. We actually have a few more snowflakes expected to fall tomorrow up there. I do want to take it to traffic, though. Good news is nothing major to slow you down this Wednesday morning, except for Coors Southbound as a hit Alameda. Okay, hopefully you're waking up well rested this morning. That's because British researchers say a good night's sleep could be the equivalent to winning the lottery. 
Researchers say a good night's sleep helps improve your mood in a way similar to winning a jackpot of about $150,000. So not necessarily a million bucks, but pretty close. <laughs> dog lovers, listen up. There's no surprise what's the most popular dog breed. The Labrador Retriever took top honors for the 26th year in a row. Filling out the rest of the top five for the German Shepherd, Golden Retriever, the Bulldog, and of course the cute little Beagle. They all held on to the same spots from last year. Congrats. Okay, here's a feel good story for you on this Wednesday morning. A boy in Kansas asked his friend with the Down syndrome to the big dance. That's to prom. 15 year old Carly Whitman got the surprise of a lifetime from her older brother's best friend, Shaden Weldon. Shaden's shirt says, I know I'm not your typical Dorito, but I'm going to be cheesy and ask, will you go to prom with me? Carly, of course, said yes. Shaden says Carly is a pretty big Doritos fan. Very creative. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up to Shaden this morning. Cute story. He did awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, time for the five back. We start at number five. A 78 year old man is once again planning to bike from Santa Fe to Georgia, all to raise money for a local nonprofit that helps new mothers in need. It will be Reverend Duncan Lanham's second cross country bike adventure. Last year, he raised over $2,500 to help low income families. He's trying to raise money again. His GoFundMe page is already up, and we've posted a link to that on our website, krqe.com. On to number four. Now, new numbers this morning show the city of Albuquerque paid out nearly $13 million in overtime to the police force in the last fiscal year. The report just released shows the department was almost $4 million over budget. The police union says it's a result of the officer shortage. The city blames most of that overtime money on training required by the DOJ. At number three, warm and windy today with temperatures still in the 80s. We will see high fire danger over central and western New Mexico. Come tomorrow, rain and snow over the north and west. Strong winds out across the eastern plains with strong to severe storms possible near the eastern state line. Number two now this morning, ART construction crews will be out working on the section of central for the second time at central Rio Grande. It's the second time in a month the city says concrete that's been laid for the ART project has cracked, but no other explanation. Business owners in the area say they were told during testing the concrete did not withstand the pressure of the buses and cracked. The city's ART spokesperson says that's just not true. On to number one now, President Trump working hard today to gather enough Republican support for the revised GOP plan to replace Obamacare. Today, the bill is set to be taken up by a House committee for the fourth and final time before it's expected to go to a vote. 216 votes are needed for it to pass. All Democrats expected to vote no. That means GOP leaders can only afford to lose 21 votes. But just in this morning, CBS News is now reporting 24 Republicans oppose the bill as it stands right now. The president is warning Republicans if they don't get it passed, they could lose their seats. Democrats are waging a war against the bill and plan to use all available time speaking out against it today.